Hey everyone, welcome to my channel ASP.NET Core and today I am going to show you the next video tutorial of Web API project and in this Web API project you can say that uh, just uh, I am going to discuss about synchronous as well as asynchronous programming. So first of all uh, I want to see this types of thing. Here we have a synchronous uh, and asynchronous programming using in Web API and uh, what is the difference between the synchronous and asynchronous. Uh, so if you uh, want to see the difference between the synchronous and asynchronous programming using in web api so just i want to discuss first of all synchronous programming and where we use the synchronous programming suppose if you want to this types of message like print hello world and print image and print other messages so uh, in the synchronous programming uh, the order of the printing uh, task or you can say the printing instructions uh, top to bottom the steps is top to bottom uh, and if you uh, upload uh, suppose 1 MB image and 2 MB image so the text is rendered quickly uh, as compared to the image so if, when the image is uploaded so it takes too much time like 5 second to 6 second instead of uh, text then other messages uh, will display just after the image so the uh, when the image is loaded during the time if the text message that is the other message is loaded then there is a no problem but in case synchro only the synchronous programming wait for the other messages okay so you just go for this uh, asynchronous programming in the case of asynchronous programming print hello world first of all and then print other messages because the image will load uh, and take times so uh, processor actually going for the round robin uh, scheduling it here and uh, go for the uh, next messages and uh, it will mm, give to the 5 to seconds milliseconds to the image to load the background okay so in the asynchronous programming the image will be uploaded uh, in the background positions so there is the asynchronous programming but uh, in scenario both technologies both programming are used widely uh, and uh, each programming have a um, have a uh, necessary for the users so just i am going for the synchronous as well as asynchronous programming in our project so here we have a category controller and uh, you know that the first method is going for the list of uh, list of the get methods if you want to take asynchronous programming because that uh, here we have a data context things just I want to use the data context things. So uh, it takes times to load data from the database. So you can use await uh, keyword at here in asynchronous programming. That thing is going for the asynchronous programming because database is a large database having too much time. So that process is actually uh, happen in the background. So that programming used in asynchronous and there is that category so here we have a task type of category it's just i want to return and here you can say that asynchronous programming so in the to list async method is not there so just use control dot and because the microsoft entity framework code is back is at right right now that here so here cannot implicitly convert type system dot collection dot generic list that is the type to uh, the model dot category so you can say that uh, here we have a generic list we just uh, send it uh, here so here we here we use the list of type this and uh, the problem will solve easily oops okay 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 there is message okay so here we have used asynchronous programming to pick the data from the database and there is the next message so here we have the synchronous programming and id 0 return pad request that is the synchronous programming and this is the asynchronous programming you can use it here so you can use a task of type by action result actually task of this uh, type of this return actually value if uh, only single task you cannot uh, need to uh, return any type of value so here we have a asynchronous programming so you can use await keyword okay so there is the thing 
so in this in the all things you can use asynchronous programming where you, where you want to access data from the database so like that uh, here you can use asynchronous programming as well as there is uh, here you can use asynchronous programming and uh, there is a no need if that uh, type of thing you can do so there is a no need to use uh, asynchronous programming only synchronous programming because the synchronous programming is a fast process to process the data but uh, if if your data is too much uh, uh, loaded then there is uh, uh, heavily process does not take uh, uh, does uh, take much time in the synchronous programming but in the synchronous programming you have to use with the background process okay so thank you guys for watching this video and keep watching all other videos which is related to asp.net core web api the new topic uh, is uh, content negotiation and uh, what is the content negotiation actually Actually, content negotiation is the process of selecting the best resources for a response when multiple resource representation are available. Content negotiation is an uh, HTTP feature that has been around for a while, but for one reason or another, it's maybe it's a bit uh, underused. In short, content negotiation lets you choose the rather negotiate the content you want to get in response in the REST API request. Suppose if you want to uh, get uh, XML data instead of JSON data, then you put the header request, accept header request and change the uh, content uh, accept header and can uh, change the output uh, format like that. If you want to, uh, 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 first of all, run this application and you will see the output in the XML instead of JSON format, then what should you do? Uh, that that thing you can use content negotiations. Content negotiations happens when a client specify the media type. It's want a response for the request accept header. Okay, by default, ASP.NET Core Web API returns a JSON formatted result. It will be ignored that browser accept header. Okay, so just that is the default. That is the default is accept header in the format of JSON. So you can see a little bit. So wait for some times. Okay. So here we have a API in the category and the responses is there 709 uh, 7049 and you uh, just I want to get the categories. Wait for some time. Oops, getting an error. Like the post. Okay, okay, okay. It's it's not a post actually, just I want to First of all, just I want to get the request. Okay, here we have a uh, post request and just I want to get request and send it. Then you will see that uh, the output uh, will come in the format of the session. There is the like suggestion. If you pass in the header information, like the key is uh, accept header. That is accept in the format of the JSON and like application oblique XML. Just I want to uh, show the output in the format of XML. Then what should you do? Because uh, the default is JSON written. If you pass accept header in the form in the form of XML, because you are not using XML serializer in your application. If you want to use uh, content negotiation, then you can pass that type of thing in your uh, program.cs file like builder dot services dot add mbc dot add xml serializer format okay so the basic line of thing you can add in your uh, in your program.cs file then you then you will use content header and and your application will return xml format instead of uh, json format so that is the uh, you can say that this is the uh, content negotiation so here we have xml format and just i want to send that data so you get the result in the form of xml like that 
So thank you guys for watching this video and keep watching all other videos which is related to ASP.NET Core Web API.